so I wanted to start off today and I wanted to talk about my story in the sense of like how did I actually end up here what made me decide to learn Spanish I think a lot of the times we can focus on the methods the how the secrets which is good we'll talk about that more more videos coming by the way um but I think at the same time it can be important to just understand the why because I think that can be just as if not more important And so my, my vision for this podcast is that eventually, maybe even some of you guys come on when we talk about your experiences, your your kind of language learning journeys and what actually caused you to learn the language. Um, but I thought, yeah, today, just to give some context as to my story, how I got here would be helpful. Also, so you guys can understand a bit more of the context as to how I even ended up in this, in this position in the first place. So look, a bit about myself, um, especially for those of you guys that don't know me. So my name's Jonathan, 22 years old. I live in the uh, UK, just outside of London, in a place called Kent. And yeah, I come from a family. My family's from Ghana. So, which is actually quite important. So my, 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 my parents both speak other languages, but growing up, myself and my brothers, we only spoke English. So it's important because I think for me, that's always been, I wouldn't say an embarrassment, it's been a, but it's been a topic, like almost a sensitive topic, you can understand. But now when I look back at it, I realize that, you know what, that was actually one of the positives because that gave me the urge to one day get to the point where I could speak other languages. I think it's always been something curious, like, wow, like just something even the silly as well, like, Questions like, oh, when you speak another language, like, do you think in English? Do you think in, like, just questions like that. Just innocent questions like, oh, what's it like when you can kind of process things in other languages? It just, it just seemed interesting to me. So I think that's, that late, that planted that seed there. And um, there's been a few seeds planted, I'd say, over the period of my overall life, which kind of led me to make the decision to learn Spanish. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'd start from the fact that my first passion was football. And I think this story is going to, gonna seem like i'm i'm uh i'm taking the scenic route but it's okay like for those of you guys at least if it seems interesting to you i think um it'll make sense in the end so yeah my first passion was football I played for a team i was all right i was all right not too bad um and you know what? at this point i actually wanted to become a uh, football player that was my goal that was my dream so as you can imagine as most bearing in mind look i'm, li I'm living in the uk that's the I mean, football's the biggest sport here, or soccer, if you American, you American guys are watching. Um, but I, all of the kind of the role models or the guys you kind of aspire to be were, were football players at the time, at least for me. Like, that was a dream. And so, based on that, if we look at who, like, my favourite player has always been Messi. But not just Messi, like, the whole Barcelona team, I can't emphasise, like, sometimes I speak to people from Barcelona, and I think maybe they don't really realise because they were just there and it was... To be fair, at the same time, yeah, because they lived it. But at the same time, for me, it was like, that was the dream. Like, Messi, Iniesta, Xavi, Puyo, all of those guys. I was thinking, yeah. One day I want to be like those guys, no? And so, again, at this time I wasn't thinking, oh, yeah, I want to learn Spanish because of that. But that was a seed. And as I said, like, I think if I think about the story of how I learned Spanish... There was just a lot of seeds that were planted that eventually led to me making that decision. So that was a seed. Um, and yeah, I played for a while. Eventually I stopped playing football. Um, and what happened was, I ended up going to secondary school. So in the UK we have, I guess, uh, is it elementary? No, elementary, is that, what's it called? Um, preschool, nursery. And then you have primary school and then you have um, secondary school. So secondary school, you end up like, I don't know, 11, 12, when you're like 11, 12. Um, and when I go into secondary school, this is actually quite important. So I'm pretty sure most kids in the UK, if not all, have to learn some sort of language in secondary school. That's just standard. What happened was at my school, um, the one that I went to, they there were six different houses, right? So they split each year group into like six, six different, almost teams, if you will. Um, and then each team... Like the splits were also based on the language you would learn. And so some of the houses did French, some of them did Spanish, some of them did German, right? And so I distinctly remember like when I was going in 
to the school, I had to do like a questionnaire, like fill out a form type thing, like apply. And I picked French, interestingly. The reason why is because, so I have two, two elder brothers, one younger brother. My two elder brothers went to that same school. My eldest brother did, he was in, he was in a house called Castle. They did German, I wasn't really interested in German. And then my second brother was in Bridge and he did French. So I was like, you know what? Let me be in the same kind of house as him. So let me do French, I'll be in Bridge. At this point, like, again, the football thing was there, but the idea of learning Spanish wasn't really, it wasn't the dream yet, right? So I signed up for Bridge, I signed up for French. But what happened was the year that I went into that secondary school, they changed the rules. So every child, so I ended up being in Bridge, but every child, regardless of what house you're in, had to do French and Spanish for the first two years, right? And so at the time, I'm just like, I mean, okay, cool, whatever. At this time as well, and you guys will probably know this, like languages were the lessons where people just mess around, like we've just messed around. Um, but the interesting thing is, bit by bit, like I really started to like Spanish, bit by bit. I don't know what it was. Um, and so I went into this thinking, okay, cool. I'll do two years and then I'll just carry on with French because we also had to do a language for GCSE, which I'll talk about in a second. But I thought, you know what, let me just do my two years of French and I'll like that more. And then Spanish, I'll just kind of keep it on here. And then once I can, I'll get rid of it. But interestingly, like the Spanish started to get more important to me than the French. And so by the time I had to make the decision, because then we had to make, we had to make a decision as to what subject we wanted to do for GCSE, which is, which are the exams that everyone does at like 16 years old. I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to do Spanish. And I think what topped it off for me, like the seal, and this is one of the biggest seeds of the whole story for me, was that for the people that decided to do Spanish, there was a school trip to Barcelona. And so I'd never been to Spain before. Um, at this point, I traveled a little bit, mainly to, I think I've been to France with my family, been to Ghana. And I'd been to America, but I'd never been to, to Spain. And so we ended up going to Barcelona around this school trip. Um, this is 2016, February. Um, and do you know what? To this day, that was probably one of, if not the best trips I've ever done in my whole life. Like when I think about the happiest moments of my whole life, it has to be that trip. And in fact, the people that I went with, the people that I stayed with, because we were split into different groups, two friends, Sean and Adam, I don't know, they might be watching this. My guys, shout out. Um, but yeah, like we, 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 we still talk about that trip. And it was like seven years ago, right? So what happened was we, we go to Barcelona, right? We end up, we end up being split up into groups of like three or four, right? And we end up living with these like host families. Cool. And, um, we were the last, so we, 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 we all meet up in this place in Barcelona called, um, uh, what's it called? Plaza de Catalunya, I think. Which is like, I think, you guys from Spain will know, Plaza de Catalunya, I think that's what it's called. It's like the main plaza in Barcelona. So we meet there, and then there's like all of these host families, and then bit by bit, everyone's being called up to their host family. We were the last ones, right? We were the last ones to be called, and we were called by this guy called um, Daniel. And, uh, oh, it's just the nicest guy just the nicest guy and this is a big part of the story as well we'll come back to that but the point is that i wanted to make was look um it was just such a great trip and one of the key things is we ended up going to watch barcelona play right our, us like just us three and and daniel um and look, up to this point as i said football was my first passion i'd never been to a professional game but we had this opportunity and i was like you know what um, which is a story in itself because technically we weren't supposed to go, but then we were, none of the other kids got to go, but we ended up going and it was just like, it was just like, you can see the way I'm smiling. It was just, a, it was just a great trip. Um, and I think for me, going back a bit more to, to what we're trying to talk about, it was one of the things that solidified number one, my liking towards Spanish but number two, I remember like, because of that trip, 
I said to myself, one day, I don't know when, but one day I want to be fluent in Spanish. One day. Don't know how, don't know when. I don't really have a solid reason to do that. But that trip alone was enough to make me say, yeah, one day, that's what I want to do. And so what happened was, interestingly, I'd moved on like around this time, which is 2016 time, I'd moved on from football to basketball. So at this time, I played for a basketball team and uh, I actually wanted to like, my, my dream at the time was to become a basketball player. This was around the time for those of you guys that like basketball that LeBron had just moved back to Cleveland. LeBron, Kyrie, Kyrie was my favorite player. LeBron was there as well. And I was like, yeah, that's the dream. And so I was playing for a team. Okay, team, I was okay. I wasn't really that good, but I was okay. Um, if I could defend myself. Um, but what happened was to continue playing for that team, beyond 16, you have to move to an academy, right? And that's what I wanted to do. And that's what I actually planned to do. And so that's after those GCSE exams that I talked about. So I do my GCSEs. I did Spanish GCSE. I did okay. No, I did well. Don't get me wrong. I did well, actually. But I couldn't have a conversation. I couldn't, like, it wasn't like I could have a conversation in Spanish or understand a conversation. It was more like I really understood how to do those exams, understood what they were looking for in those exams. I understood the mark scheme. And so I was really able to do the exam well. But it wasn't that I really understood Spanish, if that makes sense. Some of you guys will understand. Cool. So what happens is now I'm having to make the decision as to, okay, I've done GCSEs and I'm going to do my A-levels, which is like the two years before university, right? Um, in Spanish, I'm pretty sure they say uh, bachillerato. So what I'd, my plan was, okay, like for me, my goal is to become a basketball player. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this academy. Um... And my plan was actually to continue learning Spanish, right? So I remember I had um, applied to the school that accepted me. I went to visit the school. I met the head teacher. It was good. Like it was, it was good times. And I, it was going to be like in this place called Canterbury. And I was going to go there. And uh, last minute, my dad said no, which is, <laughs> which is, um, by the way, that's not like, put it this way. Like now looking back, it was a good decision. Um, but um, the point is, the point I actually wanted to make from that is I was going to continue to study in Spanish, but I stopped, right? So this is 2017, start 2017. That was when I stopped learning Spanish in school, right? But I still had that, remember, I still had that from the year before. I still had that desire that one day I'm going to learn Spanish, right? So because I didn't go to the academy, I stopped learning formally. I carried on in my original school, which is a good school as well. Um, but because I was actually, I thought I was going to go to that school and I picked Spanish as my option for that school. And my actual school that I carried on going to, I hadn't picked Spanish for sixth form. And so I stopped, I stopped, stopped in Spanish at that point. Um, and then life continues. Now at this point, my, my second dream to become a basketball player had, had come to an end. Um, and so my next dream, like I was like, okay, cool. Like, what do I want to do? And that's when I came, like I came across the world of like entrepreneurship. Um, this is 2017. So it wasn't as like, it was just before I'd say the boom of like this whole social media entrepreneurship stuff. Cool. And I specifically came across, uh, the world of trading. So yeah, I got involved in that. Also got involved with my brother, some friends. And we took it pretty seriously. Like we took it very seriously. We ended up like creating a team of like traders and all of that good stuff. We traveled around a little bit um, and it was good. And to be honest, like we really were convinced that, you know what, we're gonna, like, we're gonna have some big time success with this. So this is now from like 2018, 2019 onwards. Um, and I'd say that was my main focus from like 2018, 2019 onwards. Every now and then I'd watch something. This is the interesting thing. Like every now and then I'd watch something and it would remind me of the fact that, you know what? I have this dream to one day learn Spanish. And what I'd do is maybe just like for a couple of days, use drilling, go, but like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was never consistent. It wasn't my main priority. It wasn't my, my main priority. Um, and I even remember when I, when I went to university, so I went to university in 2019, like during, like at the start of university, 
I can't remember where I, I went to like a, um, I don't know if it was one of those places where there was like this library place and I, I, I can't even remember what the context was, but I'll speak to someone and they were telling me that there's like a Spanish club and I was like, oh, that's interesting. But I think it ended up that I'd, I'd sign up too late so I couldn't enter. Um, so I was like, oh, you know, what? I've got other priorities anyway. Um, it was interesting because every now and then I'd always be reminded of the fact that, you know what? You set yourself this goal, like this is what you want. But I still didn't have the pull that was strong enough to even do it. Right now, this is, we're now in 2019. Um, I'm in university first year obviously towards the end of 2019 we have the whole situation with the lockdowns and everything that's when it kind of starts Um. so cool I ended up actually staying in my like my university dorm for a, 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 like the first half of 2020 I was just there chilling and I was really just focusing on the whole trading side um we were really focused on that. Like that was that was really our goal. Um, we had like very big goals for ourselves, um, which I mean we could say that like it was we were young and yeah, like you could even say kind of um, I don't know if the word's naive, but the thing is I learned a lot in that period. Like I learned a lot about growth. I learned a lot about mindset. I learned about a lot about self belief. A lot. I learned a lot of the foundational. Um, I'd say. Mm, the foundational mindset we could say tricks right so for the foundational mindset um let's say approaches or attitudes that i used as a foundation to build my language learning process or journey and i think a lot of the success i had in learning spanish was down to the fact that i technically failed in what I wanted to do with like the trading side, but I developed a certain level of understanding as to how important the mind is and how important like self-confidence is, right? So what happens is, obviously we have the whole situation, lockdowns, they start kind of clearing up a little bit-ish towards the mid, mid 2020. And what I actually had to do was look for another place to live because for the second year of university, I couldn't stay in like the dorm that I was in on campus, right? So I went to the University of Surrey, which if you guys kind of know geography wise, it's like just how it's like kind of the southwest of London area. And so I was like, all right, cool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna we we ended up moving anyway, long story short. So we we ended up moving into like an apartment in West London, right? Um that was me, my brother, and some other friends, right? And we were all kind of working together on this whole trading idea. We had big goals, big dreams, cool. <clears throat> what happened? Well, by the end of, long story short, by the end of 2020, um, we could put it this way, like, it wasn't really going to plan. It wasn't really going to plan. Um, I'd failed. Put it that way. I'd failed in what I at least thought I wanted to do by that point. Um, and so Christmas was coming. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Let me um, let me make a quick trip back trip back home to Kent for Christmas, and then I'll come back after Christmas and see what I can do. Um, and carry on like that. So I come back home. I think maybe a couple of days before Christmas, 2020. And okay, Christmas happens. Fantastic. And my plan was to even go back to London like before New Year, before 2021. I didn't see what I could do. I don't know. Maybe make something happen. Uh, but I ended up staying. I ended up staying in my house. I'd say this this period, it wasn't like I was, it wasn't like a, um, a really bad period, but I'd say at the same time, it was a period of reflection. It was a period of, um, it was definitely, a, a, I don't want to say like it was a real, low season but it was but it wasn't but it was if that makes sense i wasn't really clear on the next steps put it that way it wasn't clear and so what happened was i'm at home first week of january goes by i'm still at home I'm still, bearing in mind i've i've we've rented out this place from like mid 2020 to mid 2021 i'm not even there i'm paying rent i'm not even there i'm at home 
first week goes by, I'm set at home. Second week, third week, fourth week. I don't know why, but I stayed instead of going back to London. January comes, sorry, February comes around. I'm still at home. I'm staying. I'm still, um, first week, second week, third week. I'm still at home. And then towards the end of February, I, to this day, I'm not even sure why, but I get a very strong inclination, like a very strong, I don't even know how to call it, but I just knew that, you know what? I need to learn Spanish. And at the time, it didn't really make sense. Like it kind of almost left my mind that idea of learning Spanish. Been years since I'd set myself that goal. Um, I wasn't doing anything at the time that required Spanish. I didn't even know why I wanted to learn it. I didn't have a plan. It, it had nothing to do with my priorities at the time. But I was like, you know what? I have a voice that's telling me that I need to learn it. And although like I dabbled in Spanish here and there before, like just using Duolingo, I knew that this time, this time it was serious. Like this time, by the time I'm done, I'm going to be fluent. And I was so sure. And I don't know why. Like to this day, I don't know why. But it was more, it was even more than, okay. There was definitely, I wanted to do it. But it was like more of like, I need to do this. Like I actually have to. And so I hit the ground running. And at the time I don't even, like I don't even know what I'm doing. All I know is that there's an app called Duolingo. I download Duolingo and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm going to really smash this out. And I do. And maybe you saw see my last video where I'm like, okay, I really tried this and I wasn't really progressing. But it's interesting because I noticed that this was actually a passion for me when I tell people that, oh, I'm learning Spanish. And it wasn't like, the, it wasn't like a, uh, they had a bad reaction, but they kind of dismiss it. It was like, they kind of dismiss it. It was kind of like a, um, okay. You know, like for me, it was just such an uh, exciting I idea. It was such a, uh, a cool thing to do. But then when I speak to people, they were just like, yeah, okay, cool. And that's when I realized that, you know what, maybe there's something here for me. Like maybe, I don't know what it is, but maybe there's um there's a reason why I feel so drawn towards doing this. And it's only now that I'm like I, I I'm I guess I'm starting to make these videos and speak to people that are learning languages as well. That I realize that you know what? Maybe I can create something in this language learning community that will genuinely help people who also have the same goal. Because I think language learning is more than just learning to speak in another language. It has a way, like learning a language, it has a way of connecting with you people. It has a way of opening the world up to you. Like you, you, you start to see things differently. It has a way of changing your perspective on life, right? And I think, at least from my perspective, there's a lot of people that through language, learning a language, and definitely this was my case. Not only can they reach the next level that they're trying to get to in their life, like that's the gap, but it can also kind of save them from where they are right now. In the sense that like for me, We'll use my example, like in the sense that for me, learning Spanish for me was the thing that got me out of a real low period whereby I felt like I'd failed big time. And maybe for you, it's like completely different. Maybe like, it's just, it's just not even that deep or maybe like the angle you're coming from language learning is because you, you want a job or maybe you want to travel. Like, and it's the same thing. Like I, I, I've heard stories and I've researched different people learning language and it's like the language learning isn't necessarily just the language. Like that's cool. Like definitely being able to speak another, it's fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But it's kind of, there's a deeper level whereby learning a language and I want to put it this way, maybe it'll make more sense can often be almost like a therapy for some people. Well, at least it was for me. And I think because it happened to me, 
my theory is that there's definitely more people. Maybe their story's not exactly the same, but there's definitely going to be more people that have a similar story. And if I can make a community of all of those people, or even just the people that want to learn a language, but they want to just find out what are the best ways to do so. If I can achieve doing that, and if I can achieve creating something that makes a mark in the language learning industry, I think for me, that would be the best thing. And so, look, I start learning Spanish. I have my ups, I have my downs. But uh, pretty much the rest is history. Now I'm here, two and a half years later. But I think there's a lot of people watching this that are going to be in that period where they're starting as well. I think there's a lot of people that... You're in that crossroad. I, I think that's probably the best way I can get to explain it. Well, there's a crossroad. And either you learn this language that you're kind of thinking about. Like, I'm not talking about people that... I'm not talking about the people that just never consider learning language. If you're watching this and maybe you've, you're considering it or you've started and you're in that process, or maybe you've already been doing this for a while, but you never really considered it like this way. Like if you can, if you can arrive to the point whereby you actually achieve, like you actually achieve the goal you set for yourself in relation to learning a language, 100%, there will be a big change in your life. Like that's, that's kind of, I guess that's the point I'm, I'm I'm trying to make and what I want to do with this podcast, what I want to do with this YouTube channel and maybe any of the communities or the things I create in the future is I want to be the person that helps people to facilitate. Like I want to facilitate that change for people. So look, overall that's my story. <laughs> um, I'm interested to hear your stories as well. Uh, maybe you can drop it in the comments or maybe you, you have a similar story. Maybe your story is completely different. That's fine. Maybe for you, it was just like, look, I, I had to move to England. I know some people that just I had to move to England and I needed to learn English and now I'm here. That's fantastic. That's cool as well. Um, but I just think, look, there's a community of people that, like, I can't be the only person that has a similar experience. And I can't, I can't, I can't be the only person that just has that love for languages in a way that goes beyond just learning how to say words in different ways. And so that's why we're here. Um, look, we'll, uh, we'll be back soon. More topics. Definitely going to have more interviews with other guys. Um, and definitely more videos coming soon where I just break down more language learning secrets or tips or whatever you want to call them. Um, if you're still listening at this point, I actually really appreciate that. Um, and yeah, we'll see, I'll see you soon.